today on Nation, we talk about the scariest thing that can happen in window cleaning. It's the customer from hell on WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCRWindowCleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? You found it. High five to you. This is the Window Cleaning Podcast. Any small businesses can learn from some of the stuff we talk about. Even if you don't learn anything, you may have fun, and it may just be better than a cat video. So go watch all the episodes. Uh, If you are returning here and you're one of the awesome nation, high five to you. You're the reason I get to buy name brand, uh, I believe, toothpaste this time. But uh, thank you guys for everybody that doesn't know. Uh, This is my gig. This is how I make my money. So if you need supplies, please do hit me up. Give me a call. It doesn't cost you anything extra, of course, but I get credit for it on my end. My number is 862-312-2026. That's 862-312-2026. Go ahead, save that number. I want to be your rep. I want to be everything. I want to be your everything, man. Just uh, go do that. A couple of quick shout-outs of awesomeness today. Jared Lowe, what's going on, man? Chris Johnson, what's up? Uh, Lorenzo Bias, uh, Spaz Marinkov, Spaz Marinkov, Marinkov. I probably said it wrong, sorry. Hey, uh, Jose Hernandez, what's going on? And if you want to be one of the awesome people and order your supplies from me, it really would be awesome. So please think about it and do it. Um... That's it for our intro. We're going to get right into today's episode, which is kind of a fun one and kind of a cringeworthy one. Uh, Every one of us has had garbage customers. Every one of us has had customers from heck. We've We've all had that. Which, by the way, I just want to clarify this. I don't think that uh, customers from hell is a bad word because that's where they're from. It's not really a swear word, so I apologize if I offend any of you. Uh, Go ahead and write an angry email. Uh, But, (laughs) by the way, we've only had one bout of swearing this entire uh, two plus years of doing this, and it was with one person, so hopefully I'm still running on that uh, thing. But anyway, we've all had horrible, horrible customers, and uh, there's just some things some people just aren't going to be happy ever, ever. Like, think about that. There's just some people out there who no matter what you do, you give them a foot rub while you're doing windows and they still would say that you did it too hard, right? There's just some people out there who are not happy. It's their MO. It is what they focus on. You have a choice to focus on two things, the happy or positive or the negative or uh, angry side. Like, that's your choice. Like, you, it could be raining right now. But you could be like, well, at least the grass will get watered. And then there's other people go, oh, rain, I hate rain. Like, you can focus. It's the same situation. It doesn't change anything. But you can focus on one side or the other. Keep that in mind. I try to be a positive person most of the time, sometimes. I just bottle my rage up and tuck it down deep inside. Uh, No, but but really, uh, there's just some people who don't, they'll never be happy. And we've all had those customers You've really literally gone out of your way for them and they just aren't happy. And then we've also had customers that are super awesome. I had customers uh, one time, <laughs> early on, uh, this lady's out in her like garden in the back. She's I got like this patio is covered with trees we're cleaning and the guy right next to me broke a window and she looked up from her magazine and she goes, are you okay? And goes, yeah, yeah. And she goes, oh, okay. And went back to it. Like that's one thing. You know, and then we have the other side where um, I had uh, a lady one time that said that I left divots in her grass from my ladder. I I can't, you can't make this stuff up. There's just some really, really horrible, horrible stories out there of people who just want somebody to yell at. There's another theory, and I'm not making excuses for these people, but there's another theory that I, I do live by. And it's uh, the garbage truck theory. The garbage truck theory basically states that all day, every day, and this could be for one day, one week, one month, one year, your whole life. But every day you're picking up garbage. You're taking it from everybody else, right? 
the coffee burns you, you spilled in your pants, you were late to work, you ran out of gas, whatever those things are, the little bits, right? And they keep packing up and packing up. Well, eventually, eventually your garbage truck fills up and you have to dump it somewhere. And sometimes you as a service provider get the load dumped on you. Sometimes, sometimes it happens that way. Like there's just, there's nothing to do about that. Obviously, always try to be your best. That's not what we're here for. But it's how to handle these customers, these horrible customers. And uh, if you've never worked in retail uh, in general, um, it, it really does tell you you need to be nice to everybody because uh, there's a lot of people out there who won't be nice to you. So be nice. Be nice to everybody. But there's a few things that you can do to save yourself from a customer from hell. That Basically, it's all preventative. It is all getting yourself out there and blocking any possibility of it happening. Now, a lot of us, like taxes, like um, winter, like uh, you know uh, the IRS, all those things, every word I say is cringeworthy. Like those things, those words, if I say IRS, like that strikes fear into you. So instead of bringing it out in the open, we don't talk about it. So a lot of the times, a lot of us don't talk about what can happen, what did happen, um, what you think didn't go as well. You only talk about the positives. And it's great. Bring up the positives. But there's also something to be said for bringing up the negatives so that it's no longer a negative. Like here's a, here's a, here's a, a point in study. If you hate tax time, and it's awful, it's horrible, it's terrible, and you don't talk about it until, you know, February, and then you start planning on it. It's a panicky thing. You've maybe delayed the whole thing, but what if? What if you get yourself an accountant who then can handle it every single month so that when it does come that time, it's already done. It's completely burdened. You've talked about it every month. You can't be scared of something if it's brought up, right? You can still fear the known, but fearing the unknown or the unspoken is a lot, a lot harder. It, it allows your brain to uh, think of the worst. If you're going in for surgery, it could be whatever surgery, and the doctor says to you, now the worst thing that could possibly happen is when you're done with the surgery, you'll have a little numbness in your fingertips. Well, you know, you talked about it. Well, that's not the, that bad. I mean... I'm alive after surgery. I thought I could maybe die. Like your brain could have gone so many places and telling you the actual negatives brings it out in the light. It's, it's also sales uh, for people to really be comfortable in sales. You have to tell them the negatives. And that's part of this is getting to somebody um, and, and creating their expectations. But we'll get to that. The first thing that you can do to help stop the customer from hell the terrible, awful customer that ruins your week, month, or even year. I think that's a friend's line. But anyway, Ramones or whoever sings that. But anyway, um, it is uh, getting waivers. Um, now, don't do, don't get a whole notebook full of waivers. Nobody likes that. Um, it is scary if you throw lots of waivers out there, um, and people aren't really, they don't really like that. But a simple scratch glass waiver is big. And that is a cover your butt kind of thing. We call it a CYA. Now, technically in a waiver, even if it's done up by a lawyer, there's technically some ways to get around that if they ever do decide to, to sue you for scratches. Even if they were fabricating debris, they could um, come at you as saying there was uh, gross negligence and that's why it happened, which gross negligence basically breaks any type. And I'm not a lawyer. Don't listen to me. But it could break any type of legal, blah, blah, blah. But it's a cover your butt kind of thing. It is saying, hey, here's a waiver. And I always tell people, uh, all right, here's a waiver we need signed. Uh, we can start work after. But this basically states that if we find any fabricating debris on your window, which is a uh, manufacturer defect, uh, that uh, we will notify you, of course, but in the time that we find it, we may cause a couple microscopic scratches. We'll try our darndest. We wouldn't be in business if we were out there scratching people's windows, but I want you to be aware of it, and uh, our insurance does require you to sign this. Well, all of that being said, brought it up to light. It explained what it is, 
It explained the worst case scenario that we could leave some microscopic scratches. And then we're going to try our best not to do it. Like if you bring it up there, people go, oh, okay. I've had one person, or like two people, one person sent it to their lawyer friend, which were at the property. We had to wait for like 40 minutes. It was never again would I do that. And then one person wanted to read it, which is cool. It's a sheet of paper, read it. It's got thuses and thous. If you don't have a scratch glass waiver, talk to an attorney, have you write one up, uh, or look online, or jump into a forum or Facebook group. And a lot of guys out there are, uh, they are able to share that. Change your name, change your specifics, and it may still be good in your state. But again, it's really a cover your butt thing. But what it is is bringing up the negative of the situation, bringing it to light. And if you bring it to light, it's not so scary. So bringing that up is number one. And this isn't a list, I shouldn't say, because the next one is actually my biggest one, I guess. But what we talked about in the beginning is setting expectations. The big thing with setting expectations, if you show up, okay, pressure washer guys, or if you do pressure washing, if you show up to a job and you get all done and people go, well, I mean, there's like, you know, that's like the, the it doesn't look like I had pictured. It's, it looks a lot better, but it's not, I mean, it's not perfect. Or doing oil, oil is huge on that. Well, there's still some shadowing on that. Well, it's because you didn't tell them that's how it could happen. If you tell them in the beginning, and I do, and again, I'm just a guy with a microphone, so you can listen to me or not, but it's telling somebody in the beginning what can happen and what they should expect. If you tell them that, very, very seldom do they then forget you told them that and uh, still get PO'd about whatever they think they get PO'd about. When I do oil, this is what I say. I say, well, we're gonna use all of the chemicals and equipment that we have in our arsenal, but let me let you know that with oil and concrete, concrete's very porous and oil will get in there. We try to drop as much as possible and it may be gone when we're done, but there's a very high likelihood that you will still see a little bit of shadowing. Now it's gonna look a heck of a lot better and we're gonna pull a lot of it out, but I wanna make you aware of that just so you know what to expect. Boom. Oh yeah, no, hey, I just want it out of there. I just want it to look a lot better. It's now known to them that whatever I finish, however it looks, however it's done, it is understood what it's gonna be and what it's gonna look like when it's done. That is the expectation. Nobody in my history, could have been in yours, and if it is, tell me down below uh, in the comments here on YouTube, but nobody in my history have I ever said that to someone, and then afterwards go, well, they're shadowing, and I have to go, yeah, we talked about that. Like everybody looks at it and go, hey, and we'll get to that other follow-up side, but I'll get to people, show them it, and say, see, like I said, there's a little bit of shadowing. That's the deeper down, you know, oils that we, we couldn't really pull out or, or clean. You may want to get it cleaned again in the future, and that'll bring even more up, blah, 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 blah. But now they see it. Now they know. They go, oh, great. Oh, it looks a lot better. People understand what to expect when you tell them what to expect. If you ate a warhead, and it wasn't named a warhead. Somebody just said, hey, you want a piece of candy? And you ate it. You would hate it. But if somebody handed it to you and said, hey, this is very, very sour. Now it's your choice if you're going to eat it or not. And if you still eat it, you can't eat it and go, oh my gosh, you didn't tell me it was sour. I can't believe it's sour. Like I told you, we talked about that, right? So understanding the expectation makes things so much easier when everybody's on the same page. There's a couple things um, that you need to focus on that are very big. Now, telling somebody when you're cleaning a window, oh, these windows might not look clean when we're done, isn't really good because you're there to clean windows, right? But a few things on that is breaking something. That's first and foremost. Like I said, we had a guy break somebody in front of an awesome customer and she was like, oh, cool. I said later, I said, you didn't seem very upset when you saw him uh, crack that, break that window. She said, I knew you guys would take care of it. Like, right? Obviously, we built a trust that was super awesome, but I've had a guy also break the, nick the top of a perfumey, like essential oily thing that was sitting by a bathtub and they just cracked the top, put the top back on and we're like, oh, I don't need to tell anybody. This lady was irate. She said it was some like 14th century blah, blah, blah bottle and it was valued at $1,200 and it was full crystal. It 
wasn't. It was a TJ Maxx. Probably still had the sticker on the bottom. But she was super pissed and duly so. No one told her. But here's the thing. I've had stuff happen. Bring it to somebody right away. Say, hey, I just want to let you know there was an issue upstairs. The back of a pole, and I explain it in detail, back of a pole uh, as we were cleaning had hit something and broken this uh, window or I was moving this window and cracked it or I was adjusting the double hung and cracked it, whatever it was. I tell them in specifics. But don't worry, we're going to absolutely take care of this ASAP. I wanted to let you know of it first and foremost uh, and we'll get this taken care of as soon as possible. Just letting them know. I don't even go into like, hey, and because of that, I want to give you money back. Just let them know the situation and let them know how it happened, that it happened, and you're doing everything to make it perfect. Those three things are huge. They're key to make people not happy. Now, I've still had somebody where I got called on a job site and I can't, I wasn't there. I didn't, wasn't out in the field a lot, um, but I had somebody who had broken something and the lady was quite upset, and I'm pretty sure it's because he didn't explain it well. It was one of my... It should have went through the operations officer, and it didn't. Uh, he tried to explain it himself, and probably was like, oh, I broke this thing. Yeah. And uh, you can do it wrong. <laughs> hey, uh, I broke a window upstairs. Well, what the heck? How would you... You know, like people are... But if you say everything that their brain is thinking, you bring it all to put it in the front, it makes people a heck of a lot better. Um, so that's, that's one of the, uh, main ones. Um, and let me turn my alarm that's going off. Um, another big one is hard water. If you're a window cleaner, you've seen it on glass. Now hard water, hard water is a restoration type thing. If you get hard water, everybody has it sort of in your area. A lot of the times it's from sprinklers. A lot of the times it's from aggregate, whatever it is, stone landscaping, if you have hard water, I will always bring it up and I'll say, hey, we got done cleaning your windows. I'll explain that one later. Um, but I always say, um, everything looks great. The windows turn out fantastic, but there is some hard water in the front, just a little bit of like water spottage, basically some uh, minerals that are caked on the glass there. Now the window is still absolutely clean, but if you ever get so tired of it that you can't stand it, let me know. We can do a full restoration on it. Uh, we do use an acid washing product and uh, we can remove that, and that price is $20 a pane, so keep that in mind. Now, most people, especially if it's uh, heavy, I word it that way, now is there an upsell there? Heck yeah, there is. But I don't like a bait and switch, so I don't personally do the heavy upsell right then and there. Now later I will, because I'll write it down, and then later when they're booking, I'll say, hey, do you remember last time we found that hard water? Do you want to stick that off this time? But I won't try to push it that time, because I don't want people to think it's a bait and switchy type thing. But letting them know that the hard water exists is so that later when they're walking through, they don't go, oh man, these windows are dirty. Because that's what they're going to think. These are all spotted up. I told them about the hard water. I gave them an option of how to fix it. That we can do it. And I also told them the price. All of the negatives that could have got them angry if they found that are now out in the open. And it helps. I'm telling you, it helps hugely. That's hard water. Hard water is very, very... Uh, popular in window cleaning as far as people getting callbacks because they see hard water. Uh, if you put the R in front of something, if you do restoration, restoration, you charge accordingly for restoration because you don't know how long or how hard the restoration is going to take. Uh, if you know the fabulous Thad Eckhoff, uh, he says that he cleans, uh, I forget his wordage, but basically water-soluble soiling or something. However, he says, basically, if he can clean it with soap and water, it comes off. Awesome. If it doesn't, he doesn't do it. And that's one of those things. Now, there's some people out there who go, I, I don't charge for screens because I do them on every job. Uh, it just is, uh, we're so much better than you. And I always, you know, fine, cool. If you always do hard water removal every single time, that's awesome. Tell me down below on YouTube. Let's start a conversation. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about bringing it up if you are not going to clean it. Um, and then anything else pressure washing, I always let them know that it's not going to look brand new. That's always my ending one. You know, look at this house. Oh, it's going to turn out great. It's not going to look brand new, but it's going to look amazing, right? Letting them know that it's not going to look brand new. Now, some people out there don't even do it, but the aluminum sided houses, I will let them know it's going to look like garbage when I'm done. I can absolutely clean it. It's going to look terrible when I'm done. And they go, what? 
I said aluminum siding and explaining everything is the oxidation. With the oxidation, you actually have uh, the aluminum is going to come through, and the aluminum is a gray color like a blank soda can. Um, that is going to come through, and it's going to look patchy and spotty. You may have to repaint when we're done. I talk people out of aluminum all the time because I know it's going to look bad when it's done, especially hard oxidized. But anyway, letting them know stops them from having the negative in their brain. It's already brought up. Another way to really save face, make sure that this is kind of in your repertoire, is a follow-up call or postcard. Now, I don't do follow-up postcards right away. You can uh, send Jim. Uh, you can surely, surely, you can surely do those uh, with them. I'll make sure to post a link down below or uh, check out my Facebook uh, page, WCR Nation, the Window Cleaning Podcast, and uh, I'll make sure to put links on there. But um, I do a follow-up call. I don't. I have my office goddess do a follow-up call. And here's the reason why is that when the work is done, the next morning I call and say, hey. She calls and says, hey. But I would call and say, hey, it's Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. I just wanted to follow up. We were there yesterday. I wanted to make sure everything still looks amazing. I know now you've seen all the lights, uh, sunlight of different parts of the day. Everything looking great? Yeah, it's looking great. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, good, good, good. If I didn't get them to sign up for the schedule that day, I'm going to get them to sign up right then and there. But doing the follow-up catches people right away. If they're waiting to call me because they saw a streak or a smear or whatever they think they saw, and I call them first, I've had people, oh, yeah, you know, actually there was a, a, a smudge on one of the windows, but it might have been from the dog or something. I just wiped it up this morning. Oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, if you ever see anything like that, let us know. But she may have been stewing. She may have thought, smudge. They can't even clean the windows. I may have saved my customer because I called them first. I got it out there and showed that I care. And that's huge. Not only that, but I can upsell them and get them back in the schedule, which is also amazing. If you're not doing it, please do it. Make a million dollars next year if you're not already. Uh, postcards, the same thing. Postcards, you got to wait. You got to send it out. And you got to wait for it to get there. And then it's been a couple days. Maybe something's happened in that meantime. Um and uh, it's nothing better than a, an in-person call. It only takes a couple seconds to do, so think about doing that. Um, if you have a procedure for finding scratches, make sure that every one of your employees knows that. Um, another kind of thing is that there will be scratched glass. There will be scratches in windows. There will be fabricating debris. You'll find it, and there will also be windows that are just damaged. I'll tell you a story. Frank Lloyd Wright is a type of um, architect. He's very known in the Midwest. He's got a bunch of different things, but this is style. Well, we were at this house that was designed by a protege of Frank Lloyd Wright, a custom home. One of those ones that were super empty because they probably were never there. Guy was very wealthy, lots of fancy cars. Um, and we started cleaning the first row of windows uh, and it was their main bay of windows um, facing Lake Michigan. Uh, we cleaned them, and uh, operations guy stopped it right away. And uh, as he's detailing and looking, he saw these scratches. Oh, these are scratched. These are very, very expensive panes of glass in a very expensive house with uh, one of those customers you know is just going to be a pain in the butt. And he stopped, and uh, before he brought it up to them, he called me, and I drove out there to the property. Um, and we looked over everything and, uh, it was not from, uh, window cleaning. It was from, uh, installation of the windows and, uh, it was, you could tell, um, whatever was used, there were sw these swirls towards the edges. So whoever had done the construction clean, well, we talked to the guy we said, Hey, we stopped everything on this end because we found scratches in your glass. He goes, you scratched my glass? Oh, swearing, running around, talking about how many lawyers he has and everything else, and he's looking at it. Well, we brought him on these other windows that were still dirty. We didn't even touch it. Look at, we'll call him Tim. Tim, come look at these other windows. We haven't even touched these ones yet. They're scratches. You can see them. They're all right there. I'm just going to take a rag. I'm going to wipe this, uh, dry wipe it real quick. You can see them better. Boom, there they are. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you didn't scratch. I'm showing you all over. We went through two or three windows throughout the rest of the house. All of your windows are scratched. The same style, same ways. We haven't even been in here yet. Well, that doesn't matter. He said, you're going to expect to hear from my lawyers. Awesome. So we packed up and walked away. But the thing was, I never got a phone call from the guy. Because the guy, after he calmed down, he realized, oh, yeah, those windows are still dirty. They couldn't have 
And it couldn't have duplicated the exact same scratches from those windows on these other ones, right? But we had a procedure in place. You find scratches, you stop. 100% of the time, you find scratches, you stop. Now, if we find scratches and we go through and somebody shows the scratches or whatever, uh, and they say, oh, yeah, no, we knew those were scratched. Uh, you just go ahead and clean them anyway. Okay. Uh, well, I do apologize uh, to continue. We're just going to take a quick video of you just explaining. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question about the scratches that you're aware of them. They're on the windows and then we're going to go ahead and then we can proceed. But that way we have it on records that we're both under the same understanding. And I know that's a little bit corny, but having that when guys are on the field, you already had a scratch glass waiver. But if I have a video, if it ever did come to it, I can show the video like, hey, Mrs. Jones, uh, this is Jersey with XYZ window cleaning. We're here at your house and we discovered some scratches on your glass. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I know that they're there. We've been here for 10 years. They've been there for at least that long. Okay, great. And you're telling us we can go ahead and proceed with the windows from here? Yep, absolutely. So that you do know that whatever caused those scratches may have been fabricating debris that's on those windows. We're going to try our darndest not to get any more on there, but uh, anything is good to go from here. Yep, absolutely. That little bit of a video, they say, oh, no worries, I know you have to cover your butts. That kind of thing, I have that on record. It just makes sense. That's how I do it. You can do it anyway. You definitely want to, but if you find scratches. But make sure that if you find them, you stop. Because then you have the ability to show what, you know, that they're somewhere else, like I did. I saved potentially a $100,000 lawsuit. Um, no, obviously be insured, but... $100,000 lawsuit because I stopped and because we had procedures. So that's huge. Um, another bit of that uh, is to, if you find a broken window, it's almost the same procedure, but I don't touch a broken window. Even if there's just a hairline crack, I don't clean that window. Uh, maybe the one below it I will, but that window I will not clean. And the reason is, is because when we're all said and done, I'm going to go to the homeowner and I'm gonna say, hey, Everything looked great, but there was a bathroom window on the top. It is cracked, and it, because it is broken and damaged, we can't clean it. We did clean the window below there, so if you see that one dirty, you can clean it up yourself, but we just don't want to uh, do any further damage on our end. And the reason is, is that if they go, no, you broke it. It's a dirty window. We didn't touch it, right? CYA. But putting it out there and letting them know that you found a broken, they may know that. They may have broken it two years ago with a lawnmower, knew it, complained about it, and been talking about it for two years. But if you bring it up to them, it doesn't put you in a bind. It lets them know that you know. So make sure to put that out there. Another big one, if you're in an area with storms, don't force a storm. I don't know how many times a year we would not do window. A couple windows. Hey, uh, just so you know, there is some settling in your house. The two upstairs windows we are unable to open. Now, we did clean the inside of the glass and our cleaner did clean the outside of the glass. But the in-betweens we can't get to because that window does not come apart. Now, if they go, oh, yes, it does. We have it open all the time. Absolutely. If you get the window uh, open and apart, we'll clean it. Then you have to put it back together. Uh, but we just can't force it. Obviously, uh, we don't, uh, we're don't. we not able to take on the liability, whatever you want to word. But a lot of guys try to do every single window. And if it's stuck, they'll work on it for 20 minutes only to then break the window. If you don't break it, I'd rather have a dirty window than a broken window. Because now you got to go fix it and still try to put the stupid thing back. It's ridiculous, right? So have a procedure for that. If you're working out in yourself and in the field, still have a procedure. It's nice to know what you're supposed to do when you do find the stuff, you know? And if at the end of the day, somebody's still not happy and you talk to those people who are just not happy about anything, don't hesitate to give them money back. Don't give them discounts on the next service. Nobody wants that. Remember a coupon as in like a percentage off or a dollar off of the next one or something. You have to then um, spend money to save money. I'm just going to give you money back. You paid me $400 for this. I, I, I'm so sorry that we broke that uh, that little little kid's toy or whatever. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give you $100 back. We'll have that in the mail to you tomorrow. Right? Something like that. I always would go above and beyond because guess what? If I paid them $100 for a $5 toy, some of you may think I'm crazy, but I'm here in the, for the long haul. That is going to secure that with them. Not only am I sorry it happened because it shouldn't have happened, cleaners should be way more cautious of what's going on, but now I'm taking uh, I'm taking responsibility for it. I'm making it right. A lot of times, no, 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 don't do that. No, absolutely, well, don't do that. Okay, well, you know, that when that's all said and done, somebody's just adamant and not taking it. Okay, well, listen, Mrs. Smith, I do feel terrible about that. Next time, 
um, we'd come out here and do services. You let me know, and we're going to make sure to get all those screens done for you for free, something along those lines. I'll do that only if it's the last case and somebody is rejecting all that because I still want to make it right. And even if they say, oh, we'll talk about it then, fine. But note the account. The last and final thing that you should be 100% okay with is firing a customer. If they're absolutely horrible and there's a lot of horrible people out there, it is okay to drop them. I had a lady one time, we got into the house and uh, we had, um, uh, I always wear a polo and my guys always wear t-shirts because I'm always in the office. I don't need the t-shirts. to. And we show up and the lady goes, your, outf- your uniforms don't even match. It's like, what? We're wearing the exact same thing with the same logo thing. Mine just happens to be in border polo and his, I'm like, oh, this is going to be one of those things. Well, we get to the end of the thing. Whenever we do phone bids, we always walk around the house I said to her, said, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, we didn't know that there was an inside bay, the back wall of glass. There was actually the house side that was a sunroom, and there was a bay of glass. We didn't know that was there, so we do have to increase the price. Uh, the extra price is going to be $99 or whatever. And, and her first thing to say, she said, uh, well, I sure hope this isn't because I'm Indian. That's what she had said to me, throwing race out right away. I said, I, you know what? I do apologize. I just don't think that this pairing is good for either of us. I apologize to even waste your time. Uh, but from here, we're going to just um, split ways. And uh, I do truly apologize that we couldn't get anything worked out for you. And we left. We literally walked in the car. She continued to yell at us about whatever. And we just walked and got in the car. I am 100% okay with that. If we would have had a uh, review, I would have, a bad review, I would have jumped off at that time and explained it. But we didn't. And I'm okay with that because I don't have that horrible customer in my repertoire. So there you go. Customers from hell right before Halloween. Uh, Yeah, there you go. Uh, If you are still watching, awesome to you, kudos. Or if you're listening, I'm going to give you a code for 5th, I'm sorry, 5% off. Now I think that somebody said I said 15% the other day. And I'm pretty sure I said 5. But it's 5. 5% off. Still awesome if you order through me. And this week's code is customers from hell. You tell me that. Uh, go ahead, shoot me a text. Say everything's in my cart. Or call me and say, hey, everything's in my cart. Or just tell me what you want to order. And I'd love to do that. Listen, I am 100% full service uh, salesman product specialist. So if you need anything, I'm here for you, really. I genuinely want every single one of you that is watching, I want to be able to put every order in from your $20 order to your $20,000 order. Really, really do. I want you as a customer. I can't be any more blunt than that. So please save my number. It'd be super awesome if you did. 862-312-2026. That's how I make my cheddar. If you want me to put something in, tell me the code and tell me what kind of name brand stuff I can buy. Because that is an awesome thing that you guys started that I'm totally cool about. So... Uh, definitely, definitely do that. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure to go on our Facebook page. It is newer, not newer. We just haven't promoted it yet. Just search up WCR Nation, the Window Cooking Podcast on Facebook or Instagram. Follow me everywhere because that would be super, super rad if you could. And either way, go out there. Next time you have a customer, make sure to do everything you can in your power to make them a great customer. But go out there and be epic.